Good morning, welcome to TriStar Digging. I appreciate you joining us today. We've got a little mulching job to take care of. A neighbor found me on a Facebook post I did about this new mulcher that I got, and uh, they said, hey, we'll come take a look at this little job. So I'm here this morning, and best thing about this job is I didn't have to load the truck and trailer and drive it anywhere. I just simply tracked it out here to the house. So it's about a little less than a half a mile away. So that makes it convenient. Let's talk about what we got to do this morning, and uh, we'll get started. There's going to be an addition to this garage right here, so I got to... First of all, I gotta trim this cedar tree back a little bit and then come all the way down this fence line here and we're gonna work our way back into here. Um, he started cutting down some limbs and decided to just go ahead and mulch this. We'll find a place to walk back here through the woods and kind of look at the boundaries of what we're gonna do. We'll trim all this down. Basically, uh, down that fence line and there's another fence back there about 75 yards, I guess. Um, so we're gonna work our way all the way back to that, saving the mature trees, obviously. Cutting down all this dead stuff and all this stuff, this underbrush, this privet that's grown up pretty bad. And and then uh, there's a little shed right here. And then on the, side of the, the other side of that shed, there's another fence. So it's kind of a, a little box right here that we're gonna be working in to clear all this out. Well, that's kind of the details of what we're gonna do. Uh, let's get this thing fired up and uh, let's watch this thing chew some trees. Getting a little bit closer here to that back fence line. Comes right through here and around this big tree and then goes off that way. 
Knock out this little corner right here. Get these trees out of the way and we'll keep moving on. moving along pretty good and then I, I happened to see this roll of page wire right here it's all rolled up except for this little bit part sticking out right here that's something I'm glad I saw before I hit it cause uh, that'd been a mess now I gotta let this drum spin down a little bit so uh, I can't pull this out by hand so I'm gonna take the machine in here and just kind of rake this out so I can get it out of here Well, I guess I should have looked a little closer uh, where that roll of wire was. I should have known there was something else there. So I got saw some sparks flying and I got into this right here, which I hope it's just, that's all it was. Maybe it was a, a gate or something. I don't know. I was right there amongst these cedar poles. But I'm going to let the drum spin down and uh, see if I got any on it. As it's turning there, I don't believe it did, so I'm gonna keep going.
I guess you heard that. It didn't lock the drum down, but uh, I got into it. They're just gonna be bits and pieces of this little wire all through this backyard. This one's wrapped, so I gotta get it out. We got lucky again. I got that one out. Uh, I think our luck's gonna run out at some point. It's gonna be a total wrap up job. If it's gonna cut that tree down and mulch that thing up, I'm not gonna do that several times a day. Uh, that's just too much on that machine. But I did wanna see if it would do it, uh, and it did. And I'm actually pretty pleased with how well it did clean that tree up. I'm gonna probably stick in a before and after shot of this, this particular area right here, of how uh, overgrown that was and that big pine tree in it. But it shaved that baby all the way down to the ground. Uh, here's a stump. There's the stump, and the tree was leaning sideways, so that's kind of kind of a cross section of that tree, really. But uh, I'm pretty impressed with that machine. Let's keep working. Uh, I guess we've got almost half of it, I think. Not quite half of it. But I'm gonna grab a bite to lunch. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna clean this mess up, knock this front down right here, and work my way back in there in the back again. But it is looking pretty good. I've got a, starting to get a pile of debris here, stuff that I have found the hard way. And so uh, we'll get a little pile going right here and get this ground cleaned up.
take a look around here as I get it wrapped up and make sure I didn't miss anything. This is where we started this morning, that cedar tree. Come all the way down this fence line here and walk down here to the corner of that and then we'll look back across and see if I've got anything else left to do. I found uh, quite a few things in here. Found some, you've seen most of this, I think. An old dog kennel or chicken coop, some old wire, some tires in there. Got another big pile over there that I found and really only wrapped a drum at one time with that page wire. But uh, this is the corner section here. And then now as I walk across, you can, you can see really good through here. About a couple hours with a skid steer, maybe about an hour really, with a skid steer in here dressing all this up and getting these big logs and stuff out. This would be a totally different place. But that mulcher did a good job of cleaning up all the standing stuff and the brush that was down on the ground, really just a skid steer now. And the owner of the property's got one. A little bit of time in here cleaning all that up. But you can see that big log, that tree that's fell over there. That's the other side of the fence. And then right up in there is the other corner. So we worked through all this as well, clean all that up. And the owner said not to worry too much, worry about the ground disturbance, cause like I said, he's gonna work on that himself. And then uh, here's the other pile of stuff we found. There was a, an old barbed wire fence in here. I got into it a little bit, but it wasn't bad. It didn't get wound up. And then here's the other pile of metal. Uh, we knew that old swing frame was in there, but there's some other little, few little surprises. I was working on there. But that's gonna wrap this one up, I believe. Uh, God bless you, I appreciate you watching, and uh, stick around for the message, if you will. All right, I got that job finished up on Monday, and uh, that turned out really nice. I hope you enjoyed the video. That's uh, the second job I've done with that mulcher now, and, and uh, you know, I really enjoy it. That goat does a good job tearing up those trees and cleaning up that underbrush. Done a fantastic job. So that was on Monday, today's Thursday. I done another job on Tuesday, you want to stay tuned for that video. It's a good one. I did some land clearing with the excavator there behind me and uh, actually found a rock that you could only see, you know, a certain portion of it above the ground. Dug that rock out and man, it was huge. I am shocked that 308 actually got that rock out of the ground, but it did. So uh, stay tuned for that one. That will be out uh, shortly, I hope. Uh, but what I want to talk about today in today's message is peace. And so the, the, so the world really is searching for peace. You know, governments talk about creating peace deals, countries talk about peace, individuals talk about peace. And what they're looking for most of the time, because, you know, they may not be Christians, they're uh, probably unbelievers to some extent. And so what they're looking for is a peace offered by the world or, or a peace that's really generated by man. But that peace doesn't last. That peace doesn't offer anything. It doesn't have any promises connected to it because it is worldly peace. It is man's peace. So the peace that I want to talk to you today about is godly peace, the peace that comes from God. If you want to know true and lasting peace, you have to go to the person that generated, that originated, that created peace, and that peace is God, Jesus himself. So let me read to you from John chapter 14, verse 27. It says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you do I give. Let not your heart be troubled. That's crucial. We will talk about that in just a second. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus here is telling the disciples and telling the people and even telling us today through his written word that we should not be afraid of the things of the world, that we should not be concerned so much about the things that it paralyzes us or cripples our thoughts or cripples our life because God is saying here uh, through this word he's saying that he is peace and the peace that he's living us is an eternal peace and what I, and, and I want to continue by saying this the Lord's peace is not something we can generate ourselves it's not of our own it is a fruit of the Spirit Jesus is saying that he's leaving that peace behind him meaning that he's leaving the spirit of peace uh, in his absence and actually when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit brings about that peace in our lives by trusting in Jesus Christ. God's peace gives us assurance that all is right in our soul. Even if the world is falling apart, God's peace provides assurance that God is still in control. You know, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you've had moments in your life that the world is literally falling apart around you. But when you come to the realization that God is in control, and he, and he reinstates that peace in your life, 
It's an unexplainable peace. Even though the world may be falling apart, you've got that peace. As an unbeliever, somebody that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, they don't have this peace. It's not available to an unbeliever. This peace is only a fruit of the Spirit through Jesus Christ. So as an unbeliever is trying to find this peace, that peace is escaping them because it comes from Christ. So if you want to know true and lasting peace, you've got to see that through Jesus Christ. So I want to touch on what the world's peace actually delivers for a person. This peace that the world ultimately delivers is unfairness and death. Christ's peace goes beyond this world. Christ gives us an eternal peace that is permanent, guaranteed by what? Guaranteed by his death, his sacrifice, and his resurrection. By that, we know that we can have peace by believing and trusting in him as Lord and Savior. In closing, I just simply want to say this. I'm offering you the peace that I have by offering you the truth of Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not worried about what tomorrow brings because I know who holds tomorrow. The one that's holding tomorrow is the one that's holding today and it's the one that's holding yesterday. He holds eternity in his hands. And that is God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to end this message simply by saying this. Do you have peace? Do you have the peace that I'm speaking of? Or do you have the peace of the world that's, that's unfair, that offers death, that, it, that it's a dead end, it has no... Uh, it has no substance to it or do you know the peace of God through Jesus Christ do you know him